I'm going to look at the anniversary ship, not the sea store ship. This is the anniversary ship. And I'll start out by saying the reason for that is that I'm just going to flat out tell you guys this. I am not going to purchase the C store or Z store Dyson Science Destroyers. There are three KDF ships, three Romulan ships, and three Federation ships that are Dyson De Science Destroyer variants for each faction in the Z store. I am, and they're very expensive. I am not going to purchase this bundle. I am not going to purchase any of those ships. And the reason for that is because I find it unnecessary because I have the Romulan anniversary ship and I have the Federation anniversary ship. And I'll just go ahead and tell you my general impressions are I'm not liking them as much as some other ships. So I am personally not going to spend my own money, my own Zen, my own whatever to buy these ships. I, I don't want to put out the resources to buy them because for me, the ships are not worth it. Especially since I've already got the anniversary ship and I don't even like that as much. <laughs> so there's no reason for me. And I will talk a little bit more about that because um, that may be shocking to some people who, who, who know me and know that I have to have every single starship in this game but those are ones that I'm kind of swaying away from for the first time because I just don't need them I don't like them and they don't work they 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 really bug me they really annoy me in an annoying way and I'll get to that later but anyway um, let's go over the Romulan one because the Romulan one is the one I'm starting out with today and I don't have the Klingon one, but I do have the Fed and the Romulan. So let's just start out by reading this. The Dyson Joint Command's engineering and scientific efforts within the Solanae Dyson sphere have yielded incredible results. The Romulan Republic, Klingon Defense Force, and Federation have all been able to adapt the astonishing technologies found within this artific artificial celestial structure to their own ends. The end result are truly unique starships that are inspired by designs found within the Solanae Dyson Sphere, but adapted to suit the needs of each faction without the required use of Omega Particles. Each of these starships is first and foremost a science vessel but it is capable of entering a tactical mode to significantly alter how the starship performs. I'm not going to go over how you earned this. That was only during the fourth anniversary event and is no longer applicable. But basically the key here I want to point out is that they are inspired by designs found within the Solanae Dyson Sphere not so much that they're using this incredibly advanced Solanae technology to, you know, overpower the enemy. Because they're not. They're very benign ships. Especially considering that they're supposed to have been back engineered from the Solanae Dyson Sphere, which is an incredibly advanced uh, thing. You know, piece of technology and, and the race that built it are very, very advanced. Yet these ships, all they do to me is they look like a Dyson Sphere or a Solanae technology, but they don't necessarily perform like you would think a Solanae ship or a wood, you know, fully powered up or whatever. So they're a little lackluster I think in the specifications because I think they should be a little more powerful based on what they're supposed to be based on which is the Solanae technology. Alright let's go over the Romulan one. This is the one I'm going to start with today. This is the Romulan Republic variant. I guess it's the Aves class is uh, uh, what the uh, uh, anniversary one is called. Um, hull strength is 28,500. So it's, it, it, it is a science vessel. Um, thank goodness, because Romulans really need science vessels badly. I mean, Cryptic is doing an injustice 
to the Romulan faction right now with their lack of science-specific ships on the Romulan faction. It's a big problem. This kind of answers that. This gives us a science ship on the Romulan faction, finally, um, because it has a commander science station, bridge officer science station, so that's going to allow us to use Gravity Well 3, Titans Well 3, whatever you want to use, whatever Tier 3 science power you want to use, uh, you can use that with this ship, and that makes it, I guess, one of the more better science ships for the Romulan side. Not necessarily on the Fed side, I'm going to say. Fed side, there are better science ships. <laughs> so the hull strength is not that high. But it does have an okay shield modifier, 1.25, so the shield capacity will be up there. Crew of 600, it's all right. Three four and three aft weapons, and that's pretty standard on science vessels. You're going to have three four three aft. That's that's a, that's pretty standard, even on the Federation side. So I'm not put off by that. Now it does have a an actual fourth weapon slot, but that is taken up by the Solane dual heavy proton cannon, and you can only access that cannon while in tactical mode. Now when you do that. It takes away that tier three or commander science ability that you had, so you have to have you have a choice. You have to decide: Are you going to build this ship for science, or are you going to build it as a tactical ship? And sounds weird building it as a tactical ship when in fact the ship is a science ship. So this whole thing is kind of confusing and 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 bothersome to me because it splits your build in a weird way. If, I, if I'm going to fly a science ship with a commander science station, I'm going to want to build it as a science ship. But then it has this little tactical mode you can enable that takes away that science ability, that makes it what the ship is good at, being a science ship, and all of a sudden allows this one dual heavy proton cannon to fire alongside your other weapons. But you're not really getting the benefit of tactical powers because you only have one ensign tactical or one lieutenant commander tactical um, bridge officer slot. So you really can't build it as like, you know, this really good, like you could on a tactical character, this really awesome, you know, thing that has... Uh, cannon rapid fire three and uh, you know cannon scatter volley and all that you can't really build this thing to be a really good tactical ship so it's kind of like you've got a really good science ship and a mediocre tactical ship or escorty ship or t or whatever you want to call it and it's really weird so it's almost not worth it to me to have the tactical mode because if it's not going to be as good as an escort, then what's the point of even having the tactical mode? Just leave it off and let it be what it is good at, and that is being a science vessel. So this tactical mode, I really have beef with. It just, it, it's, it splits your build. It's hard to come up with a build because you're going to have to decide, do you want to put more focus into the science part of the ship or the tactical part of the ship? And I've got to say, if you try to put more work into the tactical part of the ship, it's not going to be as good as a normal, regular tactical ship on a tactical character who has, you know, a, a commander tactical bridge officer station. I was just thinking, actually, it, does, it has commander science, it has... Um, now it does have commander. I'm, I'm wrong. It do, I think it does have commander tactical station when you're in. Yeah, when you're in. I'm, I need to backtrack everything I just said. Uh, it does have. See, it doesn't say it here on the screen, but I know from flying the ship, it has a tact. It has a commander tactical station, but only in tactical mode. So, so, but I still think it's very split. It's very hard to come up with a build on this ship. And the console modifications definitely lead towards science. Four science uh, console modifications, two engineering, three tactical, 
Base turn rate of 12 degrees per second, at least it turns all right. You can use cannons on this thing, and it flies all right with cannons. Um, plus 15 to auxiliary. Again, that's all about, you know, flying it as uh, a science ship. It can equip dual cannons. It's got a Romulan battle cloak, subsystem targeting. Again, the science ship. Secondary deflector slot, Solene secondary deflector, Solene overcharge singularity core, and then, and then in the tactical mode, um, it does different things. It's got singularity abilities. Right. So, in tactical mode, uh, by default, the science destroyer is a science vessel. However, activating the tactical mode ability, the starship will transform. Many science systems will be disabled or altered, while some tactical systems will become active. When activating tactical mode, the following occurs. It enables the dual heavy proton cannon. Now, here's the thing about this proton cannon. You cannot remove it from the ship, and I'll demonstrate that. It's, it's fused to the ship, which I absolutely hate. I would want to put my own weapons on there. Maybe. Plus 15 to weapon power. It increases your turn rate. It increases your impulse speed and, and your inertia. And the Lieutenant Commander Tactical Bridge Officer Seat is upgraded to the Commander Tactical Seat. The Commander Science Bridge Officer Seat is downgraded to Lieutenant Commander Science. Uh, the secondary deflector is disabled, sensor analysis is disabled, and subsystem targeting is disabled, and your aux power goes down. Tactical mode may be deactivated any time to return to the default science mode, but during doing so incurs a 60 second cooldown on the transformation back to tactical mode. So it does have a, a, a minute cooldown, which is kind of crazy, so you can't really switch back and forth as fast as you may want to which is not good. For example, the veteran ship, the Chimera, it has a dual mode purpose. It's got a defense and offensive mode. However, it does not have a cooldown between the two modes. You can switch on the fly even while in battle. And um, that's a lot better. But this one has a cooldown. Now you can switch in battle, but it has a cooldown anyway. The Solonade Dual Heavy Proton Cannon these devastating weapons are only available when the Dyson Science Destroyer is in tactical mode and are built into the ship. They cannot be removed. When in tactical mode, the starship effectively has four four and three aft weapon slots with one of the four slots automatically taken by the dual heavy proton cannons. These experimental weapons are already balanced to do comparable damage to more conventional energy types and can be further enhanced by consoles which enhance cannons and or proton damage. So these are proton based weapons. That means there are no fleet consoles right now that buff these. They just don't exist. There are no proton consoles. But there are proton consoles in the Dyson Reputation Store. However, they're hybrids. They're like, they buff proton plus something else. Maybe Polaron or uh, any other energy type. But they're not going to be as much as a fleet console would be if if one existed, but they don't. So you're actually losing damage on this ship because you can't use really fleet um, weapons or fleet consoles to buff that proton damage because it just doesn't exist. Proton is very new to the game and there's not a lot of ways to really make it powerful. I mean, there are ways, there are consoles in the Dyson Reputation, which we'll look at, but they are not, um, as good as a fleet or a fleet spire console would be not as powerful and they lack the uh, crit severity or crit chance that you can also get from the fleet spire consoles so bleh. <laughs> I have a problem with that and the fact that I can't remove it is my problem if I could remove it and put my own weapons on and then buff them properly with my con fleet consoles I could have a much more powerful ship but no, we gotta fuse the thing to the ship so you can't remove it. The Solene secondary deflector is the first starship to feature a secondary deflector. Although it is rumored that all members of the Dyson Joint Command are hard at work at retrofitting all science ships to have the ability. All right, the uh, Solene secondary deflector is levelless and levels up with the user. It is a heavily modified deteriorating secondary deflector and it causes some science bridge officer powers to drain a small amount of shield strength from their target and use it to replenish the 
Dyson Science Destroyer Shield. So this effect is always applied to the following powers. Tachyon Beam, Charged Particle, Energy Siphon, Tycoon's Rift, or Vi Viral Matrix. Now the only one that I use out of that list is Tycoon's Rift. And I gotta say, I have not noticed one lick of difference using Tycoon's Rift and having the secondary deflector. I haven't noticed a, a thing with it. It's the same as any other science ship to me. So I don't know if they need to work on that or what, but to me, the secondary deflector is meh. Um, it does have a Solene overcharged warp core. Um, the warp core is also part of the Solene hybrid technologies item set. The deflector shells and engines from this set are rewards for completing the mission, the step between stars, and uh, we'll look at all those uh, sets because I actually have uh, all of them. I think I have all of them. Um, this set's deflector, impulse, and shields can be earned. Yeah, I do have all those. So I have the two-piece and three-piece bonus from all that, which is the cyclical shield conduits, the structural integrity leech. I don't have... Oh, no, I do have the four-piece bonus as well, which is the advanced metaphasic shields. So there you go. I do have all that as well. And then there's a custom bridge. So we've spent enough time talking about this in the browser. I'm going to... Uh, pause this video, I'm going to go in game, I'll put up a link, I, I know I'm now saying this at the end of the introduction, but I'll put up a link anyway at the beginning for those that wanted to jump straight into where I go into the game and, and skip all this, all this introductory part right here. Anyway, I'm going to do that now, we're going to go into the game and we'll take a look at the ship. So, stand by. All right, hello everybody, it's the Doctor again. Welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online. If you have skipped through my beginning part of this video, reading the specifications off the webpage, uh, then you are just not in the know. <laughs> no. And if you have uh, read the, the, uh, the entire webpage with me and stayed for all my wonderful, blissful talking, <laughs> thank you so much and bless you. Okay, so we are now in the game. I am on Rassilon. He is my science character, as this is a science ship. And it is, of course, the Dyson Science Destroyer, the Romulan one. Free anniversary version, not the Z-Store or C-Store versions. So, before I go into my build, as always, um, this is the build that has worked for me. It may not work for you. That's okay. Uh, I, I like this. I've, I've been practicing. I've been playing with it. Um, pretty much it's the best I could come up with for right now. Um, remember the, the, the whole idea is that I am trying to show you guys these, video, uh, these ships uh, as, as a themed ship using the native abilities of the ship and using all the set bonuses and unique consoles and shields and deflectors and everything that are native to the ship to show you its unique abilities. Obviously, if I were really going to build this as a science ship, I might change a lot of things on it, actually, um, especially when it comes to the science consoles. I would, I would put more stuff into, like, doing my exotic damage and stuff, which right now I don't have set up that way. So here she is. This is the Dyson Science Destroyer Anniversary version. Um, so, this ship is a hybrid ship. It is a science slash tactical ship. But, in my opinion, by doing that, um, what they've done is taken focus away from what it really, really inherently is, which is a science ship. It takes your focus away because you've got to decide how you're going to build it. Are you going to build it as a science ship or, or are you going to build it as a tactical ship? And if you build it as a tactical ship, you're going to be lacking in the science stuff. And even as a tactical ship, it's not as good as just a flat-out escorty type ship that can just fire, you know, four quad cannon or four um, four uh, dual heavy cannons or whatever out your front. You know, you can't do that on this necessarily. Um, well, I guess you could, but the problem is, is you're stuck with this. Um, dual heavy proton cannon which you can't take off your ship so no matter what you're stuck with a proton cannon in tactical mode you don't have a choice they're not giving you a choice of energy type you cannot build a an epic plasma tactical build you cannot build a, an epic anti-proton build 
you are stuck with proton damage. That's it in tactical mode. So you're, they've kind of funneled you into building a proton-based build because there's no other options. You can't remove the darn thing. So if you're going to fire this thing in tactical mode, you're going to be firing protons. So here's the thing. If I put all anti-proton weapons all over the place, when I go into tactical mode, my little proton weapon ain't going to be doing much. So there's no point. So you have to buff it for proton damage or you're screwed. <laughs> I mean, you know, or you're just not getting the, the best out of it. So they've limited you on this ship in a huge way. That's what I see, <laughs> anyway. So, given the fact that I am forced into using proton damage in tactical mode, um, I built it based around proton damage. Get it? <laughs> so, so what I've done is, first of all, I've wrapped up in the Dyson Joint Command. Uh, Rasslon is now Tier 5, hallelujah, Tier 5 in the Dyson Joint Command. That means he has access to all of the um, things that you can get, and especially from the store. If I go to the store and I go to um, dual heavy cannons, I uh, you will see all the weaponry type are protonic polaron weapons. This goes hand in hand with the Solane proton weapon. Now, inherently, it's polaron damage, but they also do protonic damage or proton damage. Um, just not as much as the Polaron, but that can be beefed up with the tactical consoles. These tactical consoles will buff proton weapon damage and any other energy type combined with that. So I can go to um, Pole down here, Polaron. So I can get plus 20% Polaron damage to, with my Protonic Polaron weapons and plus 15% Proton weapon damage to improve the Proton part of the Protonic weapon, Protonic Polaron weapon, plus the Solene Proton weapon. <laughs> so is it, are you confused yet? I know I am. I was at first. Let me say, this has been one of the hardest builds I've ever put together uh, because Proton stuff is new in the game. And it's way more confusing than it needs to be because they don't have proper fleet consoles to buff proton damage. And the weapons are hybrids anyway. That's what I really don't like is that these are like hybrid weapons as well. These are, they do pro proton damage and Polaron damage. And because of that, you lose one modifier because the modifier is basically that proton damage. <laughs> See what I'm saying? That, that proton part of the Polaron weapon becomes one of the modifiers, so you lose a modifier. So I cannot, I can no longer get my accuracy times two damage, or my accuracy times three, or accuracy damage times two, or anything like that. Those don't exist because the protonic part is the third modifier. So, um, I don't really like hybrid weapons, to be honest with you. I like one energy type buffed up to the max. Screw all this hybrid crap. It just makes it way more confusing. And so when you right click on this, you'll see dual heavy cannons, yeah, yeah, we know that. Um, protonic Polaron space weapons have a chance to reduce the target's subsystem power levels while also possessing a chance to deal moderate proton damage directly to the hull on a critical hit. That's right, so not only does the proton damage not work all the time, it only works on a critical hit. So you're only getting proton damage on a critical hit. And it says moderate proton damage. <laughs> not, not good, not great, not high, moderate moderate. It's a moderate proton weapon. I do not like this. Um, so being forced to use protonic weapons is not a good thing because there's not good proton weapons. I need, or we need in the game, pure proton weapons. Forget the protonic being associated with something like Polaron. We need um, pure protonic weapons, especially if you're going to give us this thing 
this this weapon here, this Solene dual heavy proton cannon. Here's a pure proton cannon. We need we need to be able to get these in the game. Then I and and then properly I can properly buff my proton damage. So right now I'm doing it the best way that's available in the game, but that's a whole lot less if I were doing it, let's say, like anti-protons, and then I go to the fleet spire, and I get those uh, anti-proton uh, vulnerability locators that also increase my critical chance or critical severity. That is so much more powerful than these consoles. I don't have the inventory right now, but those consoles in the fleet spire, those vulnerability locators, so much more powerful than what's available in the Dyson Reputation store for buffing Polaron and Proton damage. So those are so much better because they 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 um, provide a uh, critical. You can choose between a critical chance or critical severity, and um, also the percentages are higher. It's it's plus thirty percent instead of plus twenty percent. So where I've got plus 20% proton damage, if I were using the fleet spy or vulnerability locator for like anti-protons or plasma or whatever, it would be plus 30% damage. So the damage is higher on them. The, um, and you've got the choice of adding critical severity or critical chance on them, which you can't get with these tactical consoles. So, being, so my, my point is this, being forced to use proton damage in tactical mode is not going to be as powerful as building a custom building a ship around a different energy type proton damage is 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 not going to be as good right now until they until until and I hope they do release better ways to to buff your uh, damage with proton weapons and to give us pure proton weapons that are not hybrids of proton and polaron or proton and whatever so um, this really turns me off to the tactical mode of this ship it makes the tactical mode not very powerful or not as powerful as putting this on a ship my my scimitar or my toll war that i had Man, that was smoking because I had I could do fleet plasma weapons. I could do the fleet spire consoles, which have the higher damage, the better critical severity. It's just so much better. So this, I don't like. This turns me off of the Dyson Science Destroyers in a big way. Maybe in the future, when they can properly give us weapons and consoles and everything, Maybe it will be better. Right now, it's a waste of my money and time with this ship. I'm, after this video, this ship is going away. Well, after the series of videos, this ship is going away. I mean, I'm going to keep it, but I'm not going to fly it. This will never, ever be my primary ship that I fly on Rassilon or on my Federation character or anywhere. This totally turns me off to buying them in the Z store. Why would I want to buy a ship like that? Anyway, now I'm going off on a tangent. I'm very passionate about it though, because I really have a big beef with it. Now, if I, and I think I'll, you know most of my beef could be solved if I could just remove that and then use my own energy type. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of my beef, but I can't. Anyway, to try to get the best out of this, to try my best for you guys to get the best out of this ship, I repped up Tier 5 Dyson. I bought everything that I could using the uh, dilithium and all that to get the best weaponry that I could put on this ship, uh, keeping in mind that it's a protonic Polaron build. And emphasis on the try to buff the protons and all that stuff. So I went with the Gravimetric Photon Torpedo Launcher from the um, Dyson Reputation. I love this torpedo anyway. This is a good torpedo. I have nothing against this torpedo. I like it. I've used this, excuse me, on the Obelisk, on my Obelisk videos. I love this. I also put on the Experimental Proton Weapon. So yes, there is one specific proton weapon. But you can only equip one. You can't equip several of them. You can only equip one. 
but this is a very cool weapon. It can operate as a beam, it can operate as a cannon. So you can use fire at will, um, or you can use um, cannon rapid fire on this thing if you have the full set, which I do, and that's called the Protonic Arsenal set, uh, which I do have. I love this weapon, I just wish you could uh, equip more of them and not just one, but you're stuck with one. And then on the uh, front, uh, the Protonic Polaron Dual Heavy Cannon Mark 12 Accuracy Damage. So it's, it, it does 400 Polaron damage, so it, it is a Polaron based weaponry and it, and it has a chance to do Proton damage. That's how you have to look at it. And then for the rear, same thing, Protonic Polaron Turrets. It's Polaron based, but it has a chance to do Protonic uh, damage so that way when I'm in tactical mode at least everything can throw out protons or have a chance to throw out protons to uh, do the best damage I can uh, in tactical mode uh, but now here's the thing you kind of have to decide how do you want to build the ship do you want to build it based on a sun on it being a science ship or do you want to build it be based on tactical I think I struck a good accord between the two I kind of built it to be both but I, I, at first, and it's, it is right now, I have built it to be a science. It is, at first for me, a science ship with the Commander Science. I only go into the tactical mode if I need to. So my choice between tactical mode and normal mode is, do I want to use Gravity Well 3, or do I want to use Cannon Rapid Fire 3? and then have four uh, or three or f yeah four firing weapon weapons three three that would do uh, can a uh, cannon rapid fire the Solon a dual heavy proton cannon works with cannon rapid fire that works with cannon rapid fire and that works with cannon rapid fire so in tactical mode I have three cannons uh, doing cannon rapid fire three in tactical mode so that's my choice I, I decide do I want in this situation do I need to use the gravity well or in this situation do I need to have three uh, cannon rapid firing three, you know, weapons. So that's how I fly my ship. I'm using the so all those the Solon A set so I can get the best out of it. Solon A deflector, the uh, impulse and the shields. Uh, of course, here's the singularity that comes with it. This is the Solon A overcharge singularity core. It's part of the whole hybrid technology set, which I have all four pieces of, as you can see. Um, and that's the uh, the shield, the impulse, the singularity core, and the deflector array that gives me a set two, a set three, and a set four bonus. So the set two bonus is cyclical shield conduits, that's plus 3.1 shield power settings. Structural integrity leech grants all of your energy weapon attacks a 2.5 chance to repair your hull for 100% of the damage they deal, may only trigger once per second. And then I have the uh, metaphasic shields I can turn on, which are really nice. I've got to say, I love the uh, metaphasic shields. Um, of course, I have my kinetic cutting beam. Uh, I always like to have that in combo with the universal console. It's 360 degrees, so that's another weapon firing forward on this ship. And remember, it turns really well, so I can do that. I can have cannons on the ship, and when I go into tactical mode, it turns even better. The uh, turn rate is turned up on it. Um, this I have to have as part of the Protonic Arsenal set. This is for the um, experimental proton weapon, basically, because when you have um, uh, when you have the three pieces, all three pieces, which I do, that allows you to use the cannon rapid fire. So you cannot use cannon rapid fire with the experimental proton weapon unless you have all three of the protonic arsenal pieces. And that is the gravimetric torpedo, experimental proton weapon, and the console, this console here. And then that allows cannon rapid fire to work with the experimental proton weapon. So that's what gives me that. Um, two shield capacity things here just to beef up my ship and this is where I might if I were you know building a, a really powerful science ship maybe with a plasma build or something I would change these out to a fleet embassy console that boosts plasma damage plus uh, exotic damage however 
I, I still can't remove that, so in tactical mode, I would be firing this one little dinky proton weapon that wouldn't be doing much if I built a plasma build. That's my problem right there. Um, tactical consoles, um, I went with the best that you can get to buff proton damage, and that's with the Dyson Reputation Store. So these give plus 20 Polaron damage, plus 15% proton weapon damage, and uh, accuracy as well. I got two of those. Um, but again, the fleet versions are higher. It's plus 30 or 33 or something like that, percent polar or uh, whatever energy type damage, plus critical severity. On top of that, you can increase your critical severity. That means your critical hits are going to hit a whole lot harder uh, with those uh, fleet spire consoles. So you're losing out a lot with this, actually. And then for the final one, I used a different one. I'm getting plus 15 proton weapon damage still, but I chose one that also improves my photon projectile weapon damage, so that way my gravimetric torpedo is now a little bit more powerful as well, just to buff that up. So my energy weapon damage and my torpedo damage are all buffed through that. And uh, all of them have that plus 15 proton weapon damage. And then they all have accuracy too. I like the accuracy part, plus 2.5% accuracy. But I think the critical severity would be more important. Anyway. That's, that's her build. That's it. That's what I got. Now for the build, uh, for the stations, you will see it It looks like it has two commander you know, stations here. It's got a commander uh, tactical and a commander science. But remember, the commander science only works in science mode. And the commander tactical only works in tactical mode. So you have to have a choice. So whatever one you, whatever thing you put here, you have to decide. In in this situation, do I need to use this power, or in this situation, do I need to use this power? And remember, you have a 60 second cooldown between switching, so you can't really make on the fly choices really fast. You've got to make a choice beforehand. Do I want to use this power, and then later I'll switch to this, and then in a minute, maybe a minute later, I'll switch back to this. You've got to really keep it in your mind what powers you're switching between and uh, what powers you need depending on your situation but the problem I've run into is okay I'm firing in tactical mode that's all great but oh wait a second here's a mob I want to grab with my gravity well but oh wait a second I'm still I still got a 50 second cooldown I can't get that mob with my gravity well because I've got a freaking cooldown so by the time my cooldown is over, I'm either dead or uh, my team is taking care of the mob already. That's another problem with this thing. Maybe if it didn't have that cooldown, that would really help me like it better. But with that cooldown, it's like, it makes it really hard to decide what powers you're going to use. And if you're right in the middle of stuff and you've already switched to one mode, you can't switch back to the other mode because of the darn cooldown. Oh, that's annoying. I've run into that so many times that I just want to punch my screen. So, not, not good. Not liking that. But I did go with Gravity Well 3 for my um, Commander Science power because I just love that thing. Um, and I do have Cannon Rapid Fire 3 for my tactical power. So when I go to tactical mode, I can, those three cannons, remember the experimental proton weapon can act as a cannon, so all three of those are cannons basically in that mode. So I do have a lot of forward firing power, but I don't have as much energy damage or much DPS, you could say, because the consoles are gimped compared to the fleet spire consoles for different energy types. Oh, so many problems with this ship, you know. Ah, yeah, there you go. So many problems with the ship. Anyway, um, what can we do for customizing this ship? Well, nothing. <laughs> You're stuck with the AVs class template if you've got the um, anniversary version. Um, changing the colors, I mean, it really doesn't even do anything. Not necessary, doesn't help. Uh, you only have one interior. Well, no, I guess you can choose the Romulan interior too. Um, I don't know if these different material types work or not. I don't know. I, maybe, I guess maybe they do. No, they cost Zen, so they don't. So these are part of the Z-Store sets. So, yeah, if you don't own the Z-Store versions, you've only got one material type. Bam. 
and you can't change the style because the other ones are also the Z store options and if you don't own that. So really there's nothing you can do to change the um, visualness of this. You're kind of locked in with the anniversary version. You have no options. You could change the pattern and that's it. Let's take a quick trip up to the bridge. Where's my bridge? Where's the bridge? Where's the bridge? Where's the bridge? Let's take a quick look at the bridge. Um, this, I was looking around the. Uh, oh no, I haven't been here before. Never mind. Here's my bridge. Oh, I was looking at the obelisk bridge, I believe, before. Right, and I had a problem with it being so big or whatever. Well, so here's the bridge of the Dyson ship and then this is the first time for me being here I have not visited this it's very round but again no windows I don't like windowless bridges I want to see space if I'm gonna be flying through space I want to see space not a hologram of it not a view screen of it I want to see it out a window alright I can select a small craft I don't know I guess this is a holograph, a holographic representation of space around him or something. I don't know. Um, contact duty officers. Here's my ship. That's kind of neat. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind having a hologram in the middle of my bridge, but I'm just saying I want to look out a window when I'm flying the ship. Uh, here's another oh this is cool this kind of flips up and uh, again this chairs look incredibly uncomfortable boy you gotta hope that the um, power doesn't uh, fluctuate while you're sitting in the seat and it flings you backward like you're sitting in it like this and you flings you backward Whee! and you end up hitting the wall over here that happens during power malfunctions as we all know that happens a lot on starships <laughs> Uh, your chairs will start flipping out and flipping you all over the ship. I'd love to see that. All my bridge officers just sitting in their chairs and all of a sudden it flips them backwards. <laughs> that's, a vis that's a funny visual. Access my account bank. How do I get up here? Okay. I guess this is my chair. Um, access library files. Again, it looks like this must be the back of the ship, so the front of the ship must be looking that way, I'm guessing. But at least this bridge is smaller than the obelisk. The size of this one is more uh, more tolerable. And uh, I do like this holograph hologram of space in front of me. That's cool. But again, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind a couple of windows, you know, around me just to look out of. Anyway, okay, that's all I can do. That's all that's the only places I can go. Let's go out into space and take a look at her. Now, there is one thing I do have to say about these Dyson ships. There's one thing I like. Well, at least on the Romulan one. The Federation one is stupid looking. But the Romulan one, it's probably the best looking Dyson ship in the game. It's very slick. It's um, it's shaped right, in my opinion. It looks like a Romulan ship. Well, that is an ugly design. My gosh, dude. What have you done to your scimitar? <laughs> Holy crap. Um, I like the looks of the Romulan Dyson Science Destroyer. Out of all of them, this one looks the best to me. It's, it looks very Romulan. It... Um, it looks good. I like the looks of this one. Now when we get to the Federation one, you're going to hear me say a lot of negative about the visuals of the Federation ship. But I like the visuals of the Romulan ship. Very, very, very nice. I just wish that the power matched the looks. You know what I'm saying? So here we go. Here's my stats that I'm currently running at 43 hole with all my buffs 43,000 hole 14,000 shield not as high of a shield as I would have thought considering that shield modifier honestly only 14,000 you would have 
think that'd be a little higher, and that's probably because of this shield here, the Solene Resilient Shield. The Adapted Mako, for example, would have a much higher capacity. But in order to get my set bonuses and the Metaphasic Shields and all that, you have to have that. Resists are at 31%, pretty good. Crit severity is at 76, crit chance 9%, bonus accuracy, my accuracy is pretty, pretty high. Movement, we'll go to impulse here. My movement is 15.3 degrees per second in science mode. If I go to tactical mode, it goes to 17, so it increases by 2 degrees per second. So you can see that uh, the tactical mode does have a a turn rate advantage, but it, re it also reduces your aux power and disables things. All right, so right now I'm in science mode. I still, th even though it seems like it turns a little slow right here, this is in science mode. Um, it's still fast enough for cannons. I can use evasive maneuvers and turn around, or I can go to tactical mode and it turns around even faster. I find it's okay for cannons, but it's right on the border for me for cannons. In fact. I might entertain a beam build on it because it's right on that border. However, it's a Romulan ship and the Romulans fire cannon. So just for the cannon quote of Star Trek, cannons <laughs> seem the thing to do on Romulans, right? It just seems like the right thing to, to fire on a Romulan are cannons. Um, so here's my powers, here's my gravity well, which I can only use in this mode, all my powers and everything. Um, the metaphasic shield, like I said, I love that shield. That is a very cool shield. Um, here's my, uh, well it increased my shield power because I turned that on, but my weapon power is at 122. My, my engines are a little low, but my aux power is at 66. Remember, I'm flying a science ship, so aux power is everything shields at 61. Now I can increase my aux power by using the uh, battery capacitor when my um, thing here, my singularity charge um, starts leveling up. I can divert power from it to um, my auxiliary power with that uh, battery button or I can use the red matter which also increases my power levels. But it does, it shares a cooldown with this so I can't use them at the same time. Interesting. All right, let's go into tactical mode. It'll drop my aux power, but um, this is tactical mode. The things extend here. These little dealies flip out in the front here. Now I have, look what I have available. Cannon rapid fire three. I can press that. Bam, I can fire three cannons that are in front of me at uh, rapid fire. So now I have a cannon ability go back and uh, those little things flip away. Now I don't have that ability anymore but I would be able to use gravity well. So you have to decide which power you want to use. Hmm. Let's go out to sector space. We'll jump into my typical, uh, we'll go to Taldewa and do what I normally do and I'll show you the powers. Um, this the, the Singularity Warp Core has a unique feature it has this uh, little button here uh, that I put here. It's called Subspace Fold. It instantly moves you two light years forward. Ma'am. So we just jumped two light years forward and are now closer to where we need to be. And it has a very, very short cooldown time, which is really nice. So you can constantly use it in sector space trying to get to where you need to be. It really helps you move around a lot better in sector space. Oh, you can also you can use it in combination with slipstream so you can be inside slipstream and use the subspace fold so going to slipstream so I'm in slipstream I'm doing that and I can still jump forward with it so that's really nice I do, however, wish that it worked in normal space. There have been instances where I've been in normal space and I'd be like, oh, I'd love to jump two light years ahead, like inside uh, fighting the Borg or fighting somebody or whatever. Be like, oh, I want to jump, you know, two light years ahead. Um, that would be a really nice thing to be able to do.
Jolan Troop. Your efforts secure it. We have need of your assistance. So we'll take this into battle now. Like I said, you really have to decide what mode you want to use because there's a cooldown. I, I start off with my science mode and start off with gravity well, especially on mobs. And then I will switch to tactical mode if I need to firepower. But we will I will try to pick out both and show you both. So like this group here, obviously I'll cloak first. Don't forget to do that. This does have a battle cloak, which is extremely useful. So this 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 group here, you know, I'll do the AOE, I'll do that. Um, I'll come out of cloak and then I'll hit him with my gravity well. See, that does wonders right there. See, so yeah, they were easily taken care of. I'll go ahead and switch to tactical mode so I can show you cannon rapid fire on this guy. There we go. As you can see, that's the experimental proton weapon. It can fire like a beam. It can fire like cannons. It's really nice. I can go back to science mode and I can get them with my gravity well. And I can do cannon scatter volley and um, torpedo spread three on them. So that's that's what how gravity well really really helps things out. But see, like right now, what if I want to switch to tactical mode? Well, I can't. I'm still on cooldown, so I'm stuck right now on um, science mode until that cools down. I can't. I, like right now, I would love to go to my cannon rapid fire three because it's available. But no, I can't because I'm on cooldown. I love that torpedo spread free. So yeah, my powers, by the way, I've got cannon scatter volley one, um, torpedo spread three, torpedo high yield one, and then of course cannon rapid fire three when I'm in tactical mode. So, there's that. Let's go to another one, take another look at it. To Japori. So now you can kind of see how you really, really, really got to pay a, pay attention. I wish they just would have left the tactical mode off. Just give us a pure science ship. I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's more annoying than anything. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not fond of some of the decisions that they made with this ship. And the uh, Z-Store and C-Store ships are, are no better. Need 
an assist. Ah, oh, crap. Came out of cloak. Didn't mean to do that. Javelins, javelin energy things <laughs> at the enemy. Now, if you don't select cannon rapid fire, it fires like a beam. It only fires like a cannon when you fire or select the cannon ability. As a science ship, it is pretty powerful, I'll give it that. Um, there's just some of those choices that I don't agree with, that's all. But, it's not the worst ship in the game, but the Romulan one, Romulan one is definitely the best, I would say, out of all of them. I really don't like the Federation one. That's even more pointless because there's some awesome science Federation ships and it's not one of them. I wanted to take a look real quick just so you can see my DPS. I'm not a DPS guy, I don't keep up with that crap, but just so that people may want to know. My dual heavy protonic Polaron cannon is doing 1,058 DPS. That is not high. That is not good for a, uh, a, a dual heavy cannon. Uh, if that, and that's simply again down to my tactical consoles are not doing the best job there. Um, that I can get that out of a beam. I can honestly get that DPS out of a out of a um, a, a beam, a single beam weapon. Uh, so that's not very good. Um, the experimental proton weapons, even less at 937, is not good either. Um, this this one is surprisingly better, 11.42. The turrets, five, those are really low too. But it, also remember, I'm not a tactical character, I'm, in, I'm a science character, so naturally I would have the lowest DPS in the game. But I know I can do better with specific different energy types uh, specifically using fleet weapons and fleet spire consoles um, I could do a lot better but if I do that then when I go to tactical mode this would be the only thing firing proton damage and it would be kind of wasted so anyway that's some of my beef I think this video has been more about complaining about the ship more than uh, uh, you know, promoting it, and I and, and I really have a hard time promoting it. Um, honestly, I like I said, this is not going to be my ship on this character. Um, I don't know what ship actually Rassilon's going to use in the long term, but this is not it. Sorry, guys. 
I think they really, really let us down on the Dyson stuff. Now, you can disagree with me. I, I fully am okay with that. I'm sure there are some people that love these Dyson ships to death and just, you know, are all over them. But not me. I'm not sold on it. And I've been using it for a very long while now since they've come out in uh, Season 8. I have been using this ship on here now for a very long time. But I'm not feeling it. I liked my Toll War better, the scim that scimitar type ship. I loved that a lot better than this, even though it didn't have a Commander Science Station. I liked that better than this. But there are still lots more ships to use, and um, hopefully maybe in Season 9, Cryptic will give us, or give the Romulan faction, a good science ship. Boy, they have really done a disservice to the Romulan faction on the science ship department, and everybody knows it. And I really hope they fix that. The Enterprise is doing some crazy stuff. What are they doing? Uh, Captain Sean here is, um... I don't know what he's doing, but he's going bunkers. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, that is my introduction. Now, I'm going to take this ship, I'm going to do the full gamut of videos. We're going to do the Borg, and then we're going to do the Voth, and then we'll summarize. I will say I've already done a lot of that with this ship. Last night, I had some epic runs on the Borg STFs. In fact, I wish I had recorded them because they went real smooth. But um, this ship did all right. I mean, it, it didn't, I didn't blow up a lot or at all, I don't think. Or maybe I blew up once. Um, and I was able to do some damage, I guess. <laughs> it was a high DPS team, though, so I don't know how much damage I was really doing. But uh, I, I seemed to do okay then. It was a really nice run, so it can do okay when you have a nice team. I don't know. Um, anyway, that's my take on it. That's my introduction. I know it's not the most glowing introduction of a, of a starship. But that's how I feel about it right now. So, um, leave your comments and let me know what you think if you're flying it. Uh, for me, I'm not going to waste my money. And yes, I use the term waste on the uh, Sea Store versions. Not going to do it. Alright, well, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next.